Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. Uh, today we have Pierce Lanou joining again because, well, it's another Tour Talk episode and another, I mean, no better way to do it than recapping the PGA Championship. Um, a thrilling, uh, another thrilling episode. We talked about it because, um, you know, we talked about it before when we previewed the PGA that mm-hmm. the last handful of years it had been super entertaining golf. You always had a really deserving winner, but also you had you know, thrilling finishes. Even last year, you think about Mito Pereira's um, kind of meltdown on 18. Um, you think about Phil out of nowhere winning the year before. You can go on and on and on back. Uh, so we expected some fireworks and we got some fireworks and we got some, also some mud baths <laughs> from Tom Kim. So Mr. I guess, mud, yeah. I guess let's just start here. Oh, you know, you maybe it's five, six years into the future. You look back on this tournament. What are you gonna? What's the first thing that's gonna come to your mind? Is it gonna uh, be the mud bath? <laughs> it's not gonna be the mud bath. <laughs> um, that's definitely up there. That was that was that was so funny. I, I got home from work on on thir- that was the first round, yeah. right? Yeah, 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 on Thursday and and turned the coverage on. Luckily, we had that delay yeah, on Thursday right. morning, mm-hmm. so yeah. I got to catch kind of more of the the end of the round. And one of the first things I see on my screen is Tom Kim essentially swimming. Yeah. In not only mud, but after the mud bath, he he went into the creek. Yeah, yeah. And and took a little bath and then um proceeded to that to, was his way. I think he, didn't he say like that's how he wanted to like kind of clean himself off? Yeah. Like I mean, I would have done the same thing. I mean, it's I'd rather have wet pants than like just super muddy yeah, pants, I, I guess. Um and then he took, you know, he took the whole shirt off yeah, yeah. and um yeah. Yeah, that was that was unlike anything I've I've ever seen yeah. in a PGA Championship or any golf tournament. I think, and I think the worst part of it was, he said in the post round interview, is he was in there looking for his ball, which he did not find. <laughs> so all that for for nothing essentially. Uh, he still had to take a drop and it must have been one of those ha- like bodies of water that quickly sinks in. Like yeah, you don't expect it, and all of a sudden you're down there. Yeah, I can't imagine. I mean, I can't imagine another scenario where he's just you know, covered. No, I couldn't believe, and, I mean, mud, mud literally almost head to toe. Yeah. It was absolutely ridiculous. But, but it and was, it wasn't worth it because he didn't find his ball. So uh, Yeah, I mean, he Tom missed Kim. the cut, but I think, yeah, I think that'll be a, that'll be a, a yeah. highlight that they'll, it was a good, they'll it was talk a good, about. It was a good pip. Yeah. Uh, a Great pip, moment to start out for him. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, but other than that, we had, we can kind of go two directions here. I'll let you kind of choose. We have Major Brooks appearing to be back. Um, obviously we at Augusta he kind of it looked like he had that swagger and then he just didn't quite put it together for four mm-hmm. rounds and then you finally he does it here this week um, or we can go with the, sort of the feel good story of, of Michael Block and go that route so I'll let you kind of pick there's a lot of I mean those are yeah. kind of the two avenues to go through yeah um, let's talk Michael Block yeah. right off the top here this is this is uh, you know people ask me a lot like why I love golf so much and Michael Block is kind of in a nutshell like stories like this like Mm -hmm. this is why I love golf like Michael Block is 46 years old club champ not club champion club pro yeah um, teaching professional qualifies for the PGA championship this year via the um, the club professional Mm -hmm. national championship right and to come out and do what he did is, it's it's mind boggling. It, because I don't think people like to, to put 70, 70, 70, 71 right. together at that course. Yeah. And we should also make it clear, like you look at that leaderboard and it was long hitter after long hitter after mm-hmm. long hitter that are up there. And then you have Michael Block, who I'm not trying to say the guy doesn't hit it far, or whatever, but he's not at, the, at that level. No, His he two doesn't. His shots he, were, you know, I, I was yeah. looking at the ball speed numbers yeah. that he was getting when they were showing him on the broadcast. Yep. He's down in the 150s or maybe low 160s with the driver, yep. and all these other guys are high 170s to 180s, you know, and it's it shouldn't be a fair fight, and he made it one with every other aspect of his game, I guess. Yeah, I mean, truly a touch of magic. Unbelievable. It's th- the stars aligned for Michael Block this week. Yeah. And um, I think, I mean, you can you can jump right ahead to Sunday. He 
is standing on 15 T, two over par. He needed the top 15 yep. to get into the PGA Championship next year at Valhalla. And he's playing with Rory McIlroy. Just like, this is like, it's just like a dream yeah. scenario. And, and if you watch his interviews and whatever, he, that's exactly how he describes it. But he, he steps up there, hits the shot, slam dunk, mm -hmm. hole in one. Didn't even know it went in at first. Yeah. Um, Which, that's always one. I, I, and again, I've never dunked a shot before, but like, there's got to be a moment of like a couple seconds where you don't quite understand what just yeah. happened. Yeah. Well, you he, he, you could see him on the broadcast. He said, like, Rory, did that go in? He's like, yeah, straight into the hole. And he just, just says, no way. No way. Yeah, he kept saying, no way. Yeah. And then just the, the caddy, his caddy. Yeah. They can use range took finders. Out, in the yep, PGA. Took out the like, scope. There's no way. He lasers it in and doesn't see a ball. Just on <laughs> literally unbelievable stuff. And uh, I think what was even more impressive, not only the hole in one, that, that up and down he made oh. on 18, I, I, you'd have to give me a large bucket I, before I, I get one of those up and down. One, because he landed it, there, there, was, there was one spot he could land that ball right. and have it work out, and that was it. Yep. And he was probably 50 yards away. I think it was like 30, 40 yards, I mean, completely short-sighted, over a bunker, everything up working up. away from him. <laughs> I mean, the level of difficulty there to get that up and down is words can't describe it. And, that, and under that, that circumstance, mm -hmm. and I don't think he knew at the time that up and down there got right. him the T-15. Especially when not everything was settled yet. So you yeah. probably, or I mean, well, if he did know, then it's even more impressive mm -hmm. if he actually knew. But regardless of if he knew or not, I just yeah, there's like I have no words. Mm -hmm. It was that was the one of the coolest, coolest things I've seen unfold on mm -hmm. on a golf tournament in a long time. Um, so other note on him was he's playing TaylorMade Tour Preferred MC irons. Really? So uh, you know that's a throwback for a lot of yeah of people. Um, and we've we talked. Um, uh, we've talked on this podcast before when we've gone through the bags of players, kind of like some players like to keep old models in the bag mm -hmm. if they work. Um, and, you know, it's fun to see, you know, a club pro make a performance like this and show out like this. But then you look in the bag, yep. you know, he's a looks like he's got primarily tailor made through the bag. But then the irons are an, a model that's a decade old. Yeah. That's um, as a gear junk anyway. I'm right. very intrigued by that. And, yeah. Because obviously all these guys with their staff deals, they can get whatever set of irons they want. A little bit different as a club pro to some degree, but to see that he's stuck with something for almost 10 years, mm -hmm. um, and it worked for him at the highest level yep. um, that it could, that's that's pretty cool for me as yeah. a gear junkie. For sure, yeah, and I think just, I mean, it just speaks to, like, they talked about it on the broadcast, like, this is the perfect example of how the sport of golf can be played by yeah. literally anyone mm -hmm. at any level. And um, yeah, playing those clubs, I mean, it's just like his whole, everything about him is just so like, you can't dislike the guy. Right. Like you, the way, just the way he, you know, kind of embraced the whole situation. Like, and, and what I find funny is that today on Monday morning, after it's over, Michael Block didn't win the PGA Championship. There's more people talking about Michael Block than there are people talking about Brooks Kepka, right. uh, you know, Scotty Scheffler, mm -hmm. Victor Hovland, you name it. Michael Block was was the well, star of the show. And what's so again, I don't think he ever anticipated playing PJ Tour events this season. No. He got invited mm -hmm. to two of them now. Yeah. The Charles Schwab this week, which actually is at a course that's gonna fit him a lot better. Yeah, a lot than, shorter than, than Oak Hill. Than Oak Hill. Um, but then uh and also the Canadian Open. Mm -hmm. So you have um, I mean, this. I mean, he's probably thinking. I mean, he even said he and his kind of party of, of people that were there with him, they had flights booked for Saturday morning, assuming that a cut would have been a long shot to just right. make the cut. Yeah. He ends up with a T15, a paycheck of nearly 300 grand, which was like, you know, 18 or 1900 lessons equivalent to what his rate is. Yeah. It's, Unbelievable stuff. It's, you can't make it up. You really can't. Um, I mean, and I'm. I'll be looking for his name in these tournaments, um, and I'm again. It's probably unfair to expect him to like follow that up with right. another, because that's. He. I hope he just enjoys it. <clears throat> I'm sure that's what he's yeah. gonna try and do. So, yep. really good. I mean, you you could not be a golf fan and 
not end up rooting for him down the stretch mm-hmm. Sunday for yeah. knowing because I think broadcast did a good job outlining like what was yeah. at play for him. What was at with, stake for him? You was... know, the, whether it was PJ Tour special membership if you get to the top three, yeah. the, the coming back next year, things like that. Um, yeah, that was, that was fun to keep track of as sort of a side story. Yeah, when tournament. that putt when that putt fell on eighteen, that par putt fell. You just like you could just feel the entire collective oh, yeah. golf world just so yeah. so happy for the guy and i i mean i didn't know i'd never heard of him i'm no nobody had ever heard of him. never heard his name thursday i see block i'm like who on earth is this guy right well, and didn't he have a cold shank in there too at one yeah, point yeah he did he, it was I, it saturday I, it might have been or was it sunday it might i think it was saturday okay. i think it was in the rain round um yeah. either friday or saturday just yeah he complete hosel rocket I think he made double, maybe triple even. I don't remember, but yeah, what a week. T15 man. for him. What a week. Yeah, he he hit, he went, that's the entire golf experience right there. Hole yeah. in one, shank, crazy up and down, playing with Rory McIlroy. Mm-hmm. I mean, good for him. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, I'm also slightly jealous about yeah, all that. Yeah, his life week, just, just turned upside down in, yeah. in four days for sure. Um, so aside from... Michael Block, which may or may not have been the main event of the tournament, uh, depending on your, you know, your viewing preferences. Um, we had Brooks Kepka return to Brooks Kepka in major mm-hmm. form, um, which we kind of sought the return at Augusta, but we saw four rounds of it this time. Yep. Uh, I, the guy, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a, uh, it truly just does not care about any other event besides majors, and that way, these this major run that he's on is just who he is and yep. he just kind of throws away the other f- events or there's a mental fortitude that he has when he gets to these that it's like I, this is mine i'm taking this yeah whatever it is it works and he's now got five majors yeah um i think it's a little bit of both um and and i'll be the first to admit i doubted brooks kapka oh yeah um mm. even after seeing the masters showing the second place you know heading into this week with all the storylines and and, and everything that was, you know, leading into this tournament. Brooks Kepka was not at the top of my list of players that I thought was going to win the tournament. And even Thursday, he kind of struggled a little bit. I think he shot a couple over, um, didn't look great. But then, I mean, 66, 66, 67, is that right. what, he, what he finished with? Yep. Just in, in that 66 on Saturday, in those right. conditions, Yeah. like, People That's where not, he took over the tournament. Players were not shooting four under mm-hmm. on Saturday. We'll put it that way. Um, yeah, and I think Brooks has that. He has that mentality. He shows up to a major, and mm-hmm. it's just sheer willpower. Right. Like he's just like you're not going to beat me. And there's also like a a methodical patience about it too, mm-hmm. because I think they were talking about it on the broadcast too. But there's a when he has to take his medicine, he does it, and it's not. Like if he drives it into, you know, a hazard or it's whatever it might be, he doesn't compound it into a double right. in these majors. It's always, I'll take my stroke, yep. I'll take my bogey, and I'll get the shot up somewhere else. I'll make it up elsewhere. It's yeah. it's never compounding it into a larger error that mm-hmm. you see obviously so many times that it happens with other players that, and I mean, in these majors where the scoring is obviously not as low, you could definitely get away with that type of thing. And he yeah. knows it. And he, yep. He's like, yeah, I'll take my bogey here. Yep. I got all these opportunities in front of me to make birdies to make that shot up. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah, I think that's the that's the best way to play golf. Mm-hmm. Um, they, I mean, I've heard so many times, you know, golf is 90% mental, You're right. 10% physical. Well, whether that's whether actually that's, true yeah, or not. That might be a bit of an embellishment. But, um, there's, but the mental side yeah. of it is... Like you see, you saw it with Tiger Woods throughout his career. He showed up and he said, "I'm going to win this tournament," and mm-hmm. that's what he would do. And I see that same mentality with Brooks Koepka yeah. um, at major championships, especially. I mean, right. and he he has said before that's all he cares about. He said, "You know, when my career's over, people are people are going to remember how many majors you won. That's it." Mm-hmm. And so that's that's his thing. And man, he he's good at it. He, I'm. That, uh, he, he might be the favorite at, at LA Country right. Club next month for the yeah. US Open. Yeah, I mean, it's even it's it's almost as if US Open layouts and this one kind of this PGA sort of felt like a US Open. It with how tough it was, the rough being thick, and um, it's almost like those favor his game even more. Yeah, just the strength he has, obviously, with his the swing speed, gouging balls out of the rough, um, 
being able to drive it, you know, far but also yeah. accurate with that yeah. high power fade. Um, yeah, the big, the big long tracks mm -hmm. fit Brooks Kepka very yep. well. Yep, and yep. he's won at them before, so. I think he was saying that was his third major win in the state yep. of New York. He's got the Shinnecock, U.S. Open, Beth, Beth Page, Page um, and now Oak, and Hill. Now Oak Hill, and it's there will be majors at in New York in not the long future here mm -hmm. that he'll have another chance, which of course is not like, I don't, I'm not saying, well, this, it's, he can only win in New York, you know, it's not no. that, but yeah. he'll, uh, he'll be a force to be reckoned with for sure. He is, yeah, he's, he's back. A, he is approaching a territory that's. Well, now I think they said too, in the stroke play era of the PGA, there's only three players that have won three of them. Mm -hmm. And it's Jack, Tiger, and Brooks. Yep. It's a decent company to be in. Yeah, he's he's approaching a very uh, holy yeah. type of player in mm -hmm. the golf world, if you will. Um, I like I think he's gonna scare ten majors. Uh, after what there. I saw this week, I mean, you have to you have to assume he's gonna be in contending the rest mm -hmm. of. I mean, as long as he's healthy, right? Which that was the deal with him the last couple yeah. of years. Like, as long okay. as he's healthy, because even pr prior to his first win, twenty seventeen, the you know the the two three years before that he was contending or at least placing top ten yep. and top twenty in majors routinely. Yep. And now it's going to be. I mean, there's no end in sight as long as he's healthy. Yeah. You know, it's when is this going to stop? So it's impressive. And you know, say what you will about Brooks Kepka, the guy, the guy knows how to win these mm -hmm. tournaments. And yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, credit where credits due. He played. He played unbelievable this week. So on Kepka. Talking equipment, he made the, the switch to Strix on last year. Yeah. Which I, as a follower of Kepka, I was kind of not loving it. Not from the sense that Strixon's equipment is bad or anything. It was yeah. just that he's been an equipment free agent for so long. Yeah. And I thought it was kind of like a last ditch effort to sort of fix something that maybe didn't need fixing. If it was just your injuries, then get healthy and it'll figure itself out. But he jumped to Shrixon. Obviously, Matsuyama's won a major. Shane Lowry's won a major with their clubs. So it's not like it was a. It was from that perspective that I had the doubts of it. Yeah. Um, but clearly, it's worked. Yeah. He jumped right back in. He got. He's now played two majors with the the full Shrixon lineup, and he's lost to one player, and it was the one player in the world. So it's a pretty good mm -hmm. start for him. Uh, those are the ZX7 Mark II irons. ZX5 Mark II LS driver, particularly of the, the kind of the newer models in play. Yep. Uh, but then, and we you know we've talked about it with uh, with Tony Finau and his his iron on the podcast. But that Nike Vapor Fly yeah, there's Pro something three iron. to that. Uh, Finau won a few weeks ago in Mexico with it. Yeah. Brooks plays it. Um, he's also got an M2 three wood. Yeah, which I saw is, that. Which is another older model. So that three wood, that TaylorMade M2, and the Nike three iron have been in the bag for each of his major wins. Yep. Uh, you don't see a lot of guys that keep clubs that seven years, you know? Yeah. I think I think part of that is with clubs like that, like specifically fairway woods and utility irons, the technology changes that are made kind of for each new model, it's, it's rather minuscule yeah. in terms of like numbers, ball speed, all that good stuff. So I think like you see a lot of these guys that play stuff that's six, seven, eight, even 10 years old yeah it's it's they find something that works for them that feels good that looks good and and you get comfortable with it and it's like well why would i why would i go mm -hmm. away from this this has worked well for me for five years right I, i'm not gonna i'm not gonna throw something else in the bag just because it's newer mm -hmm. if it works yeah. it works i think and there's something to your point there about the technology changes in that <clears throat> category of club very what hybrid utility iron just not being as significant as it has been with driver um, or irons. And the other part of it, too, is those clubs, for a lot of players, aren't used as often. Exactly. Yep. So, I mean, you'll use a driver most cases 10 times-ish, yeah. maybe even more around. Um, but three wood or utility iron for a lot of players is usually maybe a handful max combined for both yeah. of them. So. Yeah, he probably hits the three iron a couple times around. Right. Maybe the three wood another couple. Mm -hmm. So there's that part of it, too. Yeah. But, for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's I I doubted the change, but he's the tricks on is working out for him. So yeah, so it's good impressive. For him on that. Good for them. Yeah, a lot of major championships. Right, out of the, kind of the, sneaky there. Yeah, you know, and 
and our testing, of course, all that stuff's been awesome. So I um, love Strixhub. I, uh, I switched to the ZX7s, like the yeah. original ones, a few years ago now. That, those irons, that original, the ZX5 and ZX7 from two years ago, yeah. I think the, those irons really caught the attention of the general yeah. golf community, but also mm -hmm. our fitters here yeah. loved them mm -hmm. and still do. And so um, I think that's really put Strix down on the, on the radar a lot in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, so, and they now are winning majors for Brooks Kepka. So, yeah, that's um, good stuff. One I wanted to highlight was Victor Hovland because mm -hmm. you nearly jumped on this podcast Man. and nailed your first prediction. Um, yeah, he, I wanted to talk about him for sure. So, he was the only player in the field this week to not shoot around over par. Yeah. I think he went 67, 68. 70 68 mm -hmm. something like that the first two rounds might have been switched around but i mean the guy is just a machine yeah it's so fun to watch and and i really and i think i think what i kind of talked about was like his driving is what's gonna oh, really yeah. really set him up he this plays week. that that he sets his stance up close and plays yeah. that kind of pull power fade yep and it's, a, it's but automatic. i was looking at the stats and the driving this week was actually his worst statistical category. Was it? Yeah, and he I think he was only ranked like 33rd or something. So it's not like he was bad. He was still off very the good. <laughs> but but the categories that usually let him down, which are like strokes gained putting, strokes gained around the green, those were I think he was top 10 in around mm -hmm. the green and he was like 20 something in putting. So yeah. like I know he led man, the field in approach, I'm pretty sure, which is not yeah, he untypical did. for him. That's 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 what he does. He hits pure iron shots, and he stripes mm -hmm. driver, and when his putter's working, right. he's right there. And I think that 16th hole yesterday was... That's, okay, yeah, we got to talk about the bunker. Yeah. So, because we, we watched Corey Connors do that on Saturday. So, yep. Corey Connors was in contention. I think he was in the lead at that point. He yeah. was leading most he of was. Saturday. And at more or less the same exact spot. Literally like a like a within replay inches. of the shot. I mean, within yeah. inches of each other. Yeah. Where Connors was Saturday on sixteen, Hovland was Sunday at sixteen. Yeah. They, it, I don't. It must have been a deceptively tall lip or what? Because neither of them were close to even getting over yeah. either. That's the thing no, that's confusing to me. I don't know what it is. Um, and I felt so bad for Victor too because yeah. before he hit the shot, the announcers kept talking about, oh, this is where Connors was yesterday. They even showed the shot yep. that Connors hit. Yep on Saturday and then you know here comes Victor I think they even said it was the same club nine iron for whatever reason I I'm gonna assume he caught it a little thin yeah but yeah straight into the face you got to take the take the drop luckily for him he, you know he didn't have to take it unplayable because it wasn't technically in the sand mm -hmm. um, it was just an embedded ball is what what they call it and um, yeah I mean led to a double bogey and that's that was the difference right there he, he lost by two so yeah it's uh it's tough it's tough i mean victor is he's one of the the guys out there that's really easy to cheer for oh yeah he's, he's always got that he's always, always got always a smile smiling. on his face yeah so that's now going back to the open last year mm -hmm. he was in the final group of the open i believe he was in the second to last group at augusta augusta and now he's at the final group yeah pga I so think. he's got He's got that big game hunter type of yeah you know game going on right now. He's gonna win one soon. Yeah, he is. I think. Um, I mean, I I won't be shocked if he's right there next month at the U.S. Open. Right. Another tournament that that really favors ball strikers and um, accuracy. Mm -hmm. So that's his game. And um, yeah, I think I think he's he's been knocking on the door for a long time now. He's he's due yeah. for one. Also, for sure. on the equipment side, again, uh, Ping I-210 irons, yeah. older model. Yep. Uh, another set of clubs that, I mean, you, you think about these guys we've talked about. Um, we talk about Michael Black playing irons from almost a decade ago, and Havlin now playing I-210s, which are at least five years old, if not older. Yeah, I think so. so right around there. Uh, yeah, but and he's a Ping guy through and through, though. Yeah. He's got the Ping driver. He's got the Ping wedges and that putter. So... Um, yeah, he's he's knocking on the door. He'll get one. I think what you should do, 
for the U.S. Open is predict him to win again, and then he'll be in contention again and probably. One of these times <laughs> it's going to happen. If I just predict right. Victor Hovland for, yeah, for yeah. every major for the next five years, I'll probably be right. Yeah, because I'm sure... Sides. You know, I'm sure when Brooks was contending right before he won his first one, I'm sure that's I'm sure you know that's how it worked for him. He was yeah. contending, yeah, all you know, so close to breaking through, top five after top five. Mm -hmm. It'll be it's time for Victor here pretty soon. Yeah, um, I'm all for it. Scotty Scheffler. I want to talk about him? Mm -hmm. I think that's with the Byron Nelson week before and now this week. Basically, is it the third round? That's just and not even like the entire third round. It's yeah. like one nine. Like, was, I think the front yeah, was, nine. shot 39 on the front. Front nine Saturday. on Saturday, yep. 39, which I think they said was, like, his highest round in in competition in, like, or his highest nine-hole score yeah, yeah, yeah. in, like, two years or something. Just, yeah, I mean, granted, it was torrential rains right. on Saturday. I mean, it was not easy out there. But, yeah, I had Scotty Scheffler. Piece together a front nine. Yeah, that's he, really he right there. that's really the only reason he probably didn't win the tournament again was and the, the one week nine. before yeah. at Byron Nelson was yep. kind of the same story. He had one round where he didn't quite put it together, mm -hmm. but he's going to be there, and it's actually remarkable that all these majors. I mean, when's the last time he wasn't up there in a major? I don't know. I think I he know, missed he the cut at the PGA last year. He wasn't awesome at the Open last year, but I know he wasn't. Yeah. He was still around for the whole tournament. I think he was like tournament. T20 or something like that. Um, but the US Open, he was right in it at the end. Yeah. Well, he, he almost won that thing too. Yeah. yeah. I think that's like, I don't remember the stat. Um, I could be wrong, but it's like seven top tens and a win in his last like dating back to 2020 mm -hmm. in majors. So that's what, how many starts? Yep. 16, okay. Here, yeah. You got it here 12? actually. Seven top tens plus a win in 12 major starts. There you go. Dating back to 2020. Yeah. It's pretty good. So I know we were talking about this kind of date relates to Brooks. So Brooks is 50% all time in his career in majors finishing top 10. He's 18 mm -hmm. for 36. I think Tiger's actually below 50% now. Yeah. I mean, well, he's played in so many of them at this point size. now with the end of his career, it's yeah. going to go dip a little bit. But um, Scotty now, obviously, at seven for 12. So. He's on a pretty good pace there himself. Mm -hmm. um, talk about some other special temporary PGA Tour exemptions here. Minwoo Lee and yes. Ryan Fox. I'm so hyped for Minwoo Lee. Yeah. He's he's one of my favorite players to watch. Um, ever since the Masters last year, I think it was Sunday, mm -hmm. final round, uh, this Minwoo Lee character shoots six under on the front nine and was like, like literally like two shots off the lead or something crazy. Like obviously ended up not not winning the tournament or anything, but it was just like, man, this guy, he, like, he's just like, he's got that, that young, like it's all like these fiery, these modern type. golfers, yeah. like these young golfers that are coming out on tour these days, like they're so just like they're fearless. free swinging, yeah. free spirit. I'm just going to go play my game and make birdies. I think it, it does say something about <clears throat> golf competition in general, where I think for so many years it was like, you have to do it this way. You have to swing this way. Here's, um, you know, every club pro or every teacher out there was like, here's the way you swing a golf club. Right. And I think now there's, it's almost a different approach for some of these teachers are like, you swing your swing. Yeah. I might, you know, make some technical tweaks to what your swing is, but it's still going to stay your swing and your approach to the game. And I think that you're seeing that now with all these different young players. You know, we saw Matthew Wolf and his unique swing mm -hmm. that was never... He's had that forever, and that never changed. Victor's obviously got a unique swing in yeah. his own right. Um, so these guys, I think that might be part of it. It's just there's a, a sh philosophy shift where younger guys, if they're doing really well in the junior circuits, the college game, with a maybe it's a unique move. Yeah, stick with it because yeah. it's working. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you swing the club. I mean, whatever gets the ball in the hole. That's what mm -hmm. I say. Right. Because um, Ryan Fox is another one. He's got yeah. kind of a unique swing to him. Yep. And, and he was the other guy that got uh, got the temporary, you know, PGA Tour mm -hmm. status. Um, I think he was like T22 this week, and Minwoo was T18, something like that. Yep. Um, so, yeah, really, really cool for those two guys. Two awesome young players. Um, and Minwoo actually, with, with his top 20 finish this week, got himself into next month's U.S. Open, too. Yeah. So He's got some talent. He's, um, yeah, big stuff coming for him. I was running the family too a little bit. So, yep. um, but uh, I mean, a thrilling 
PGA. Uh, I know we'll have you back on for sure to talk U.S. Open when that's when that's up. Yeah. But um, this was, I mean, I had a heck of a time watching this tournament. Oh I had a busy gosh. weekend, but I had watched as much golf as I could. I was, yeah. It, my wife was doing everything she could to get me off the couch yesterday, and <laughs> I just, I couldn't do it. No. I mean, we when we previewed this tournament, you know, there was a lot of a lot of excitement. Yeah, and a lot oh, of yeah. anticipation, but this was uh, it definitely delivered for sure. This was more than, more than I, I expected. It was yeah. it was fantastic. Well, we got another one in about a month or less than a month now. The U.S. Open, another major. So, uh, but Pierce, uh, writer of the Sunday Swing, uh, go check that out now. It's on SecondSwing.com on the blog. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, those of you listening to the podcast, well, actually on YouTube as well, we are now going to be uh, inviting Kevin Kraft to jump on and talk some PGA and also where his game is at right now in the summer and give some fitting insights as well. But uh, Pierce, we'll catch you again soon here. Uh, Maybe with another very close to accurate uh, prediction for the U.S. Open. Yeah, let's do it. All right, we now welcome on the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. It's Mr. Kevin Kraft. And if you've been following, well, the YouTube channel, you are very familiar with Kevin. Um, But... If you also listen to the very first episode of Second Swing Thoughts, um, Kevin also joined us for that. So um, we wanted to have Kevin back uh, because it's been a little bit now since he's been on the podcast, but also there's a lot that's gone on for him, a lot of competition. Um, also just a lot of questions that we've received through the YouTube videos that we've done as well. So we wanted to get Kevin's uh, feedback and his insight on those as well. But uh, first we got to start, Kevin. It is the Monday after the PGA Championship. so. Today, uh, it's always kind of fun, especially after an exciting day of golf like there was yesterday to kind of look back. So um, I guess what's your first takeaway from watching? How much of it did you watch? And what was your favorite part of it? I watched as much as I could. Um, Obviously, there was some work done in there, too. Um, But I tell you what, the PGA was fantastic. Like it had the way the course was set up, the way the weather played a little bit of a part. Uh, the fact that the scores weren't particularly low. I think all of it just generated a really wonderful viewing experience. And then, you know, uh, congrats to Brooks Kepka. Played fantastic golf. Showed, again, that he's just an absolute beast in the majors. But I'll tell you what, uh, Mike Block won the week. Yeah, because I don't think any club pro has finished that high before. He got so he finished T15, and he did get a spot into the next year, uh, the PGA next year. And then actually, since then, he's been invited to two PGA Tour events, which um, I, obviously he probably never saw coming. So uh, I guess in, in a way, I, I wanted to get your perspective on this because we've talked a little bit both on camera and off a little bit about kind of the, the glamorous side of pro golf, which is what you see on TV every week. You see the PGA Tour, you see the majors, um, and then there's also kind of a non-glamorous side that I know you were familiar with, mini tours. You played, obviously, on the Nationwide Tour, which is now the Corn Ferry Tour for a couple of years. But um, that side of pro golf is not as glamorous. It's a lot tougher living. And, and I, I mean, I, I think Michael Block, his experience is a lot more like that. So to see him kind of get this experience uh, to take advantage of this opportunity was, it seems it's, it's really cool for him. Yeah, it's fantastic for him. And I, when you see the, the video of him taking the call where he's getting the invite you know, to play in Texas next week, you know, he's completely overcome. Uh, this is life-changing stuff. And it's just like... It is the stuff that, that dreams are made of, and it's what every aspiring professional wants to be able to, to create for themselves. And, you know, what an incredible story. I mean, this guy's, you know, obviously this guy's a good player, right? Um, but to step into that world, which is, you know, so dominant, and, you know, you're talking about the best players in the world. I mean, if they were Justin Rose and, and you know, Rory McIlroy the last two days, and he didn't back down, like, and he didn't, mm-hmm. He didn't shy away. He, he stuck true to the, the you know, the, his core things, which were he was going to go out and he was going to play his golf. And he felt like his golf was going to be good enough to, to be able to, to stack up to the golf course at least, right? Maybe these guys would blow by him and maybe they wouldn't blow by him. But he said he was just going to play his game and, and be who he is. And I'll tell you what, he endeared himself to the hearts of everybody, you know, 
on site and certainly on on camera i mean it was just it was fantastic and i mean goodness gracious how could you top it off better with than with with what happened on 15. i know it's that, just, like it, it, it's it's that's almost too good for you know for for the whole story right and it was very much the loudest roar of the week by a long ways and just to have it with rory there um and the way the crowd reacted and actually how meaningful it ended up being given where he was on the leaderboard and needing that stroke to get that top 15 finish uh it's all and then of course the up and down in 18 which might have been the best up and down i've ever seen uh we're very close that was complete jail over there i'm looking at that going he's got no chance to get something down like I, he's gotta exactly. he's gotta throw it up just get it up into the middle of the green at that point i thought i actually thought he could make bogey there and still make top 15. Right. Uh, obviously a couple other birdies were made somewhere else that kind of changed that narrative a little bit but um to hit that shot at that time after hitting those shots at those times like consistently throughout and to have the putter be that good i mean he just looked he looked poised he looked comfortable he may not have been but he, he certainly made it look like he was right. um man what a what a phenomenal thing you're right 70 70 70 71 on that course in a major environment um deserves props and deserves an invite to these PGA Tour events that he's gotten the invite to. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing how he can kind of follow that up. Yeah, I'm very interested to see how he follows it up. Uh, there's going to have to be, I think, a little bit of a hangover from this. Probably, yeah. Especially the, the immediate week after with the Charles Schwab this week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I... I... <laughs> he, he he deserves everything he's getting. He deserves everything he's getting, and this it's such life changing stuff. They they said it would take him like two thousand one hundred and seven oh, yeah. lessons to 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 make what he made this week, and here he is. He gets another chance, and and he goes into this next one right with with the knowledge that guess what he can play with these guys. Right, right? it's he's done it in a major. He can certainly do it in a in a regular yeah. event. And I, I just Actually, hope he I hope this... he keeps going. This course might actually set up a little better for him. It's a little shorter, and and uh, it might set up better for his game after going to a place that kind of favors the bombers, as you saw by the leaderboard. It was bomber after bomber, and then you have Michael Block, who's kind of hitting it 275 off the tee. But um, so, yeah, I mean, the, I that was, I mean, the PJs delivered how many years in a row now? So um, it's they they're doing a really good job over there, setting that tournament up, making sure it, you know, challenges every aspect of the game, and it delivers a you know exhilarating finish to watch every year so kudos to the pga kudos to the course there uh, that was epic epic to watch and another deserving champion there as well so um so speaking of competition kevin um i know on the first episode we talked about your schedule your qualifiers your uh, tournaments that you're competing in this this year so now we're we're into may here actually towards the end of may so we wanted to kind of get a follow-up with you and see how things are going I've been kind of following you a little bit too on some of the things you've been posting on your on your social media pages and you're uh, keeping up with those and stuff. So um, how are things going? Um, you know, have, you know, last couple of events, how have you played? How is it? How are you feeling going into the summer now? Yeah, it's a, it's a little bit of a mixed bag at the moment. Um, I've now played 14 rounds of golf this year total. So and four of those have been competitive. Um, first event I played was Pennsylvania Senior Open. And, you know, I, I played okay. I, I looked a bit rusty, as I'm sure probably just about everybody looked a little bit rusty. Um, shot even par the first day and two under the second day, but I was never under par for the tournament until 17 holes the second day. Like, I could not move forward. I started out slow, made a couple bogeys, made some birdies, got back into it. Could never get ahead, made another bogey, made another birdie, made another bogey, made another birdie. And then finally birdied the last two holes to finish uh, 200 for the week, one shot out of playoff. So obviously very close. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like, yeah, I feel like I potentially could have just blown this one out if I hadn't, you know, made so many bogeys. Right. Um, but that's probably the same thought that everybody's got, right? So um, it's, these things are not exclusive to me, even though I'd like to think they are. Um, so that one was okay. Uh, it was, I was pleased with the overall finish. It's a good way to get started. Um, tried to channel 
the positive vibes going into U.S. Open locals. Um, U.S. Open is not something, you know, these qualifiers aren't something that I put a whole lot of, of emphasis on just because even at my absolute best, I never got into U.S. Open. But I feel more now like I could actually get it done. I could get in if, I, if I'd play well. And uh, yeah, I went back to a golf course that I really loved, Rolling Green in Springfield, PA, uh, Southside Philly. Phenomenal golf course. And it was in great shape, except... This was, I wanted to get your feedback on this in particular. I remember you posted about the this. The greens were rolling 13 on the stint meter. They were lighting fast, but they were not completely healed up from aerification. So, you know, if you had a, a five-footer on the right edge and, you know, middle of summer, you're going to be like, okay, it's just around the right edge and just let it go. Right. It, was, it was a Plinko board. You know, you could get literally anything. So the problem there is you then don't have any trust here to to feel like it's gonna it's gonna do what it's supposed to do so um unfortunately that one didn't go great um i shot three over and it took one under to get out so um that's the end of that run for the year um this week i went to the massachusetts open qualifier uh which i've done i've had to qualify three of the last four years i was exempt last year from finished the, the prior uh, prior event okay. and uh i don't know it's these qualifiers are tough you know you don't you don't have to play great you just have to play good and i played okay uh came up a shot short on that one too so a little bit of frustration uh i i love the massachusetts open my family's originally from from massachusetts so it holds kind of a, a special place to me and i've liked being able to go up there and 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 play uh, this year was at PPC in Boston, so I kind of really wanted to see that golf course. Um, I'm on the alternate list. I have no idea what that means. Uh, I emailed the director of competitions today to see uh, whether he thinks there's any chance of, of actually getting in, because otherwise i got to open up my schedule so I can do some fittings. <laughs> I suppose, so yeah. It's, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a, good and, a good and okay start. Um, I need more reps. I need more. I need right. more rounds. Uh, I typically don't get into the swing of things. Really, sorry about the fun there. Uh, until you know, summer. I played my best golf usually when it's nice and hot out. So uh, I'm thinking good things. I'm thinking positively. I don't feel like uh, I don't feel like I've thrown away the season based on a couple of <laughs> events. Uh, sure. But yeah, um, it's been okay. It's been okay. I feel yeah. like I'm hitting the ball pretty well. I just haven't, haven't been able to put the whole thing together, right? And that's that's the big right. challenge of golf is putting all the pieces yeah. together. And that's well, and it's, it's interesting in these qualifiers, too, because a lot of – I mean, the qualifiers, it's like one round. It's like you got to play your, your round right here, and a lot of times it's – that might not be the best indicator of who's actually the best player in the field or, you know, you, you like to base it on a larger sample size, if you will, which is why, obviously, with U.S. Open, you go to sectionals and it's 36 whole day. Um, so – I guess here's here's a question. This is uh, we did the what's in the bag on on YouTube. Did have you made any changes? I know you've been tweaking with the putter and stuff, uh, and I also know that you do frequently change things um, in the bag. So, has there been any changes since then? It's a revolving door. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it just it, it's all circling around, you know. Um, yeah, I'm I'm making some changes. Uh, okay. I've actually taken the uh, paradigm. Fairway wood out of the bag, and I put my tailor-made Stealth Plus from last year back in. Oh, okay. um, I don't know. It just felt like I don't know. It was weird. Like I don't, I don't quite know exactly what it is about it. It doesn't seem to work quite the way I want it to. Um, I, I've been hitting quality shots with it, but I feel like there's more in there uh, that, that I'm not getting out of it. Uh, I may mess with some weights and see if I can. Get a little more pop off of it, but in the meantime, the I just put my stealth plus back in the okay. bag. Um, I am also um, switching over some wedges. I think um, I actually need to hit my wedges a little shorter to be comfortable with with the way things are are transpiring in my golf golf game. So I got a new set of uh, Cobra Snake Bite wedges that are are uh, probably going uh, in this week. So oh, okay. 
can't promise. Uh, no promises. And then uh, the putter, of course, is yeah. Well, the putter. Di- putter. Di- I don't think it's even worth talking about the putter right now because then in a week or two there'll be a different one. So well, it's probably true, but I've got uh, I put my Bobby Grace uh, Ollie putter back in the bag. It was the one that I got in uh, okay. before the Senior Open in twenty one. So. Um, you know, it's been a faithful servant. Turns out that I just really love the way Bobby Gray's putters feel. It's a soft feel, but the ball jumps off the face. And it's that soft, fast feel that I like so much. You know, I pick up a Cameron and it just feels hard. I picked mm-hmm. up a Bettinardi and it feels hard. And there's nothing wrong with those putters. Those are great putters. They're just It's just a feel feel preference thing for you. Yep, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, um, what... Uh... What what do you have coming up then? Is there a couple of big events coming up, or is that still a little down the line yet? So big one. The, I mean, I suppose in some ways the biggest one's coming up at the end of the month on the thirty first. I've got U.S. Senior Open qualifying. So mm-hmm. going back to the same site I've been at the last two years, and mm-hmm. I got to go into this one with with a good positive feel and and some hope. I just don't want to go in with any expectations. I mean, I've been super fortunate to get through the last two years. Um, you know, to get in once is amazing. To get in twice in a row is just just incredible. So, um, you know, I'd love to get in third time. Um, I just can't go in expecting that it's going to happen. Expectations will be the death of me for sure. So, just got to go in and and love the golf course. The way I've loved the golf course the last couple of years, and and just try to play best I can hopefully mm. roll in a few putts sure well we'll uh I know we'll be following here probably at the office as you as you compete so um I know it's actually it's been super fun the last two years now to watch you actually go to the you know play major golf at the U.S. Senior Open so I'll see we'll be rooting for that but um as you know uh, very well that it's uh it's easier said than done um you've had you've been able to do it the last two years but that's a lot of really good golf to be played so but um, we wish you the best of luck with that. So, um, all right. So I kind of wanted to sort of wrap up this part with you because we did have some, you know, throughout the YouTube, uh, videos you've been filming, comparing some clubs, testing, um, we we get a lot of questions and a lot of them I can answer, right? Um, uh, and knowing that, you know, the experience I've gotten, I guess, just being here for five years, but also there's just some of them that are above my level of knowledge and that's where we need your expertise so um, I've got a, a list of them here um, here's one from from Chris asking um, so you've been in the industry for a while now uh, your thoughts on how club fitting and club manufacturing has become all tech based right which it's been tech based for a while just tech based might mean different things in 2005 than it is now but um, in terms of uh, is anything lost from prior methods that are now considered obsolete uh, so maybe it's like, you know, I know I've talked with Larry before about like the way they fit clubs back in the day. And it was like, it's all about hitting the ball and watching the ball fly. And now obviously you just go into a launch monitor and see it fly virtually. So is there anything, I guess, in that perspective that, that you might have as far as insight and how things have changed just in your experience being in the industry? Yeah, I, I don't think... I don't think we're, we're, we're losing the human element, even though this is so tech-based now. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, obviously we know a lot more now than we did when, when I first started playing golf, right? We, we were getting fit for something then, we were watching ball flights, and we might see a driver start low and raise up, and everybody kind of liked the way that looked, right? But it turns out that's, that's having too much spin. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, the tech side of things has really helped us to kind of nail down how to make a golf club perform as best as possible. But then you have to take the human element along with it, right? So I'm constantly asking, you know, how does this feel? You know, what what do you like to see? You know, somebody comes in and, and maybe we put them into, you know, the perfect launch window with perfect spin. And maybe they don't like that launch window, right? Maybe they feel like it's too high. And for them, you know, we have to we, – we, can't lose the human in that whole thing and what the individual wants to see so the way golf clubs are made now much more precise um obviously we have you know we have more failures based on how extreme we've gotten in the way golf clubs are built um you know faces fly off uh right our carbon crowns come off um 
you know, they're not welded in there, they're glued in there. So um, there are some issues that, that technology has brought on, but overall the, the benefit to the player is, is definitely there. Um, mm -hmm. And I hope we haven't really lost anything. I hope we've actually made it easier for, for us to make, you know, the consumer's life better with, with the equipment. Right. Well, yeah, I mean, now the, now the average player has access to just so much more than they ever did, you know, even, even a few years ago. Right. I mean, it's, it's crazy now that there's just so much there. Even you, you, I mean, you go into a second swing, you can demo a club and all you have right there, you have your, all your track man data for just taking a club off the rack and testing it out, you know? So it's, and obviously in a fitting, you get so much more than that. Sure. And we can never, we can never lose the, 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 the sound aspect of things, right? Mm -hmm. That's, I tell any any customer, any client that comes in, you know, I'm going to ask you about your experience. That's the most important thing. I can control the numbers, at least to, a, to an extent, but I can't tell them what looks, feels, or sounds good to them, and I want as much feedback as I can get. Right, exactly. Um, okay, so here is, this one's from Chester on the YouTube, on the YouTube page. This is from the Fairway Woods video, where he kind of did the best of all the Fairway Woods of 2023. Um, so he says, sometimes I wonder why fairy woods are referred to as fairy woods. I would call them three woods, especially as the, as these ones here are all 15 degrees. Aren't most people likely better off with a five wood as their fairy wood? And so I guess another way to maybe ask for you is, I mean, is there a percentage maybe of golfers that you fit that would maybe be better off not having a three wood or going straight to a five wood? Because you're starting to see that kind of momentum with higher lofted woods and people seeing the benefit of them. Yeah, um, it really it's uh, one of my one of my catchphrases now is uh, result may vary. Um, you know, it's it really depends on the individual. Um, I've had people come in that you know do fine with a thirteen and a half degree fairway wood, and I've seen many people that need you know to start their their fairway wood that they're going to carry them at, at you know eighteen or twenty two degrees. Um, it really just depends on on the individual. Yeah, we've tested everything at, at fifteen degrees, um, and it's you know that was just for kind of look feel sound and what those what those performance mm -hmm. numbers are it wasn't a it wasn't intended anyway as a this is a fairway wood this is what you need right this right. is just kind of showing how the how the the models were playing out against each other mm -hmm. um you know get fit definitely get fit we need to make sure that we're getting a good launch window we need to make sure that we're getting a good peak height and a good landing angle any club that we're going to be hitting coming into the greens needs to be you know, used as, you know, needs to be optimized for what it's going to be used for. Um, I'm a little bit on the extreme side as that I almost never use three wood off the deck. Um, find optimized for a tee shot. So, um, so I don't have to worry about certain things. I can, I can push for that really low spin number and I can hit it 65 feet in the air and it's fine as long as it, you know, lands and chases out. Um, but, you know, if we're hitting a shot coming into the greens, we want to have a good performance of that that ball flight that effect. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, fairway woods are fairway woods. They are well metals, right? I mean, when I started, they were they were woods. <laughs> they were actually made out of wood. Right. Um, another thing you're too young for. Uh, so it's just my music and movie influences. Um, and uh, but yeah, they're whether you want to call them woods or metals, uh, they are designed to be played off the fairway. Some of them can be played out of the rough. Um, they had to call them something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it is one of those that, like, it is also kind of a comfort thing for the player, too. You talked about the look, feel, sound, and it's, you know, how comfortable are you playing a, you know, a nine wood or a seven wood? Because um, we're seeing the benefits of those in the, as in the bay with the numbers. How comfortable are you playing that instead of a hybrid or maybe even an iron? So there's that's where that whole human element is still very much in play in the fitting bay. So um, here's one from Mark on our low spin driver video, and that, and there's a couple people that asked this. Um, it was about we we put the TSR three in that video. Obviously, the TSR four would be the lower lowest maybe spinning TSR driver, and we didn't feature that one. Um, and we maybe alluded to it in the video, but essentially, you know our, our we, our understanding, and it's obviously played out in the fitting bays, is that the TSR-4 fits into a very small percentage of players, whereas the TSR-3 fits into more. So maybe kind of, can you give that breakdown of how often, or maybe you haven't even yet 
fit someone into a TSR4 versus a TSR3? Yeah, so, I mean, from a from a way that video is set up comparison, we were trying to take, you know, the low spin versions of each company's driver or mm -hmm. fairway list or driver, sorry, yeah, that's right. Um, and most companies don't have that extra, that right, extra, extra gear, step. that yeah. turbo boost of, of, of low spin like the TSR4. Um, so it would have been, I mean, we probably could have included it just as a, hey, if you're really yeah. going to drive that spin down, here's, you know, another another option for you. Maybe that was our bad that, that we didn't wow. include that in there. But it is designed for a, a, a much smaller group of individuals, right? Somebody that maybe, you know, from that look uh, perspective, it's a smaller head, it looks smaller, right? So that might be somebody, somebody that does, you know, hits it pretty solid, but really just, you know, they've got that negative angle of attack, it really drives up spin. That might be an, an option to try to try to keep that, keep yeah. that down. And Titleist has done a great job in making that individual club more forgiving than its previous generation, right? Mm -hmm. The the TS, uh, our, our TS4 and TSR, TSI4, definitely not as, as forgiving as a new one. And we've got more tunability there, which is great. Love more tunability. Um, but I think it got, I think it kind of got left out of that, that video just based on the fact that we, it was, it's, it's extra. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's an extra type of driver that almost every other, it's like a, if we did a video on, low, low spin drivers. That would be one of the models in there. But, um, right, right, exactly. Um, okay, so well, I got one more here. Um, and this one's actually more specific to you and kind of just the way you swing maybe. So, um, said, I noticed when Kevin addresses the ball with driver, a camera makes it appear like he's an inch outside, or the ball is outside the toe of the club. Why is that? Also, I would love to know the T height he uses, as it seems like he's about three quarters above the top of the driver face. So, um, and I've actually noticed this too, um, and I, I think we've had some discussions on it before in the past, but talk to the, the viewers about kind of how that is with your driver setup. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, this came about in 2015. Um, I was starting to play or wanting to play tournament golf again, but I have the yips with the driver. So, what that looked like back in 2008 uh, was a 90 yard block to the right or a 60 yard snap hook and nothing in between, which was what really effectively ended my, my full time playing career. Um, I wouldn't wish it on anybody, honestly. So it's not something that's gone away. Um, I still have the ifs with the driver. They are, I don't think they're ever going to go away. Um, but I've found a way over you know, a period of time, how to effectively take the left side of the golf course out of play as long as I make a decent golf swing. And in order to create that scenario for myself, I want maximum extension at the golf ball. Now, I want to be connected. I want my right elbow, you know, still in my body, but I want to be as, as fully extended as I can be getting to impact. So when I set up inside the golf ball, that promotes that extension. And that allows me to then release my hands as fast as I would normally or as fast as I want without the threat of hooking the ball. So I'm not going to tell you I don't go left every now and then. I certainly do. I don't make great swings all the time. But um, for me to be able to play tournament golf, I had to be able to take out half that golf course and be able to swing freely at it. So that setup position is what actually allows me to be able to do it. And then for, because I don't miss left much, right is definitely my, my prominent miss. Um, if there's out of bounds tight, right, right. That's where, that's where now I can't even pull driver out of the bag. It just, it, my mind won't let me do it. And I know I, I won't make a good swing if I try. So that's why I've got a jack of three wood that allows me to swing freely and, and I can turn that mm -hmm. over easier and it's really geared not to go right. So driver's geared not to go left, fairway wood's geared not to go right. Um, and that's how I'm able to, to kind of work my way around the golf course. I give up some yardage when I got to hit the three wood, but at least I can hit it. Uh, I can make a positive swing with it. And uh, as long as I've got all this stuff going on up here, um, I think that's gonna be kind of the way it has to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know we, we had 
some episodes of What the Buzz is All About back in the day where you kind of highlighted some of that driver yip stuff. And it's one of those, you know, we got a player like you who is, you know, been in the last two U.S. Senior Opens, but these kind of mental demons are, are there with everybody in golf. It doesn't matter what, what skill level you are. So, um, but it's, it's... Nobody's exempted from this stuff, unfortunately. Right, right. So, um, well... And then the T-height thing. So the T-height oh, yeah. things will... Uh, I'm... I, I'm all over the place with that. It's like, it's like golf equipment. <laughs> um, if I'm looking to tee it, if I'm looking to hit it high, I'm going to tee it high. If I'm looking to tee it low, or if we're going to hit it low, I'm going to tee it low. So I'm constantly varying my tee height. And it's a question I get in, in here in the, in the tour van a lot. You know, how high should I tee this? Well, all right. So t typically the, the answer there is everybody likes to think maybe about halfway above the crown of the, of the, of the yeah. golf club. Um, individual results may vary you know i, I uh, you just gotta play with it a little bit till you're happy uh, right. somebody that hits down on it a lot they tend to do better with a lower with a lower tee somebody that's swinging up on it probably tends to do a little bit better you know having it teed up a little bit more um but even that isn't that's not a, a hard truth either so mm -hmm. um you know tee height wise let's let's mess with some tee heights and see what we can get and you know honestly if you if you're looking to hit it high T and I, if you're looking to hit it low, tee it low. I mean, tee high, let it fly. That didn't just come up out of nowhere. Uh, it definitely came from somewhere. So, um, well, Kevin, uh, thank you for, for joining today. We'll do this a lot more here in the future. Um, you know, we're, we're going to keep following your competition stuff, but also, of course, your insight and your um, expertise is valued as well by the listeners and the viewers. So um, that'll be a wrap then for episode six of Second Swing Thoughts. Um, if you're listening, if you're watching, subscribe on YouTube. If you're listening, of course, you can follow along and subscribe on wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you all for jumping aboard. And uh, as we move this train along with the podcast, we'll have some more fun stuff for you in the future. But Kevin, thanks again, and we'll catch you guys next time.